It's time for you talking to me with your host, Big JD. OTR, or Old Time Radio, also known as Old Time Radio Theater, is primarily an art of the past in which theater was played out through broadcasts on the AM airwaves. Uh, eventually, it all but died off as some of the shows went to television and listenership seemed to fizzle away. My guest today has worked in OTR locally here, and uh, he's an avid OTR show collector involved in not only the restoration, but old radios as well. We'll talk to him all about that. Please welcome Mark Bodishan to the show. How's it going, Mark? Hey, good. Good to good to finally be out here again on the airwaves. Very yeah. Nice. Well, it's great to have you on the show, and uh, we've got lots of things to talk about. Uh, first of all, though, what, what got you interested in old time radio shows, the shows themselves? Well, as I was a as a young young boy, my dad used to be a CBer, like most people were back in the seventies. And uh, anyways, he belonged to this uh, organization called React, and uh, they had a booth right next to basically AM eight hundred. And uh, he would have to do watches. Like, they would go to Channel 9 on the CB, and they, they'd listen for emergencies and deal with it, right? So kind of boring for a six-year-old boy. So I decided to go down the hall, and, you know, I, I get to listen to everybody uh, on the radio doing their nighttime shows or the day shows, depending on what time I was there. So, I mean, I did that at... Uh, you know, about six or seven, or eight even, you know. So I had a little bit of background. So I got to meet a lot of the people back then when the, they used to call it the Big Eight, you know. And, sure. Uh, and, uh, but uh, back then it was all tubes and it was uh, kind of a totally different situation than what I'm looking in front of me. It's all solid state here. Back then it was all tubes and, uh, and uh, it, it, it basically fanned out back in the 80s. It went to transistor at that point. Mm hmm. And uh, tell us about you working in radio back in the day on uh, the AM stations, playing old time radio, or, and uh, or, or helping out, or, or whatever the case was there uh, uh, that you were doing back then. And I understand you did uh, various work at a station or two. Yeah, well, I did. Uh, well, I was a. Uh, I really didn't work uh, at the station per se. I did a lot of work for the station. I was a okay. ham operator. I got my ham license in '89, mm -hmm. and uh, being that uh, as it may. I mean, I, I belong to a lot of the clubs in the city, and uh, I was able to work on the CBC uh, uh, radio tower. Up, I was up at the very top at 690 feet over on Riverside Drive, putting up a repeater tower. And uh, oh, there's a there's a bunch of different things that uh, I did. I uh, I, I met uh, Wayne Wayne Stevens back in the early 80s, uh -huh. and uh, he's a great guy. Can't uh, can't say nothing bad about him. He's as friendly as the day is long, and. Uh, uh, yeah, he was a very good guy, and uh, I helped out on uh, certain Golden Age radio shows with him, did some mm -hmm. voiceover work, and uh, uh, filled in for Stan Freeberg once in a while to do some of the show, And uh, but uh, it was all piece work, but it was really good. I mean, uh, a good feel there. Uh, Wayne was a great friend uh, up until he retired a couple of years ago and moved to Florida. I was going to say he moved to the States, right? Yeah, he's in Florida now. He uh, he got, uh, I, I went to his uh, house just before he left, about a month before he left, and uh, he was getting rid of some of his old radios. You hate to see him go, but he kept quite a few. Yeah. Do you have some of those? Uh, no, I sold them to him. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no uh, he liked the, the 50s plastic sets. But uh, uh, Who else was here locally doing old-time radio? Where, was, it, was it just him, Stan? Well, Stan wasn't actually, he's from the States, and uh -huh. uh, I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I, I think he passed on, actually. Okay, but yeah. he was originally uh, in radio back in the mid to late 50s. He did uh, X-1, minus he did a lot of the sci-fi stuff, mm -hmm. and he did a lot of writing of it, too. Oh, okay, I mean, he yeah. was actually really good. He was in it from... Really involved, yeah. Yeah, he was really involved in it, Stan Freeberg, and uh, he's a... He's uh, one of the pioneers of uh, the sci-fi that we have today. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the stuff, like uh, like uh, the word bandwidth. I mean, originally it, it stood for the frequency between frequencies on your AM dial. Sure, yeah. You know, amplitude modulation. And uh, now FM, it encompasses everything bandwidth is yeah. <laughs> for beginning to end. Yeah. 
what about Wayne? Is that he's retired, moved to Florida? Is he doing anything in radio or involved uh, in old time? I don't think so. Don't I think he's just enjoying his golden years. Like he does collect a lot of things. Uh, yeah, he likes radio shows a lot. Yeah, yeah. but uh, his 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 fancy is basically. Uh, the old time comedies, like mm-hmm. uh, well, he was a big fan of uh, Laurel and Hardy, yeah, yeah, and he collected everything that you could possibly want of Laurel and Hardy, and uh, there was a way back when I remember uh, back in the seventies, I think it was about seventy six, seventy seven, and we went to this, uh, it was a jam brief radio, and they had uh, lookalikes. And I got a picture of me and my dad with uh, with Laurel and Hardy, and it's up at oh, yeah. my front door right now, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of nice, eh? And speaking of collections and collecting, uh, you have a, a, an unprecedented uh, collection of old-time radio shows. Um, do you know just how many shows that you actually have? Uh, ballpark, even? Ballpark, yeah. <laughs> Definitely over 17,000 individual episodes. Wow. Uh, about maybe 300 and something different type of uh, genre, like different shows. Yeah, yeah. But... But, uh, yeah, so and how over 17,000. How did you acquire most of these over the years? Because I know, I mean, in this day and age, uh, with the advancement of technology, you know, everybody's got MP3s, you know, everything's on a computer now, which I believe that you probably transferred a lot of things. But you're in here in the studio, at the CGM studio, and you have this big record sitting here, like uh, a larger record than I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, what is the speed and... Size uh, that thing and whatnot. This is thirty-three or? and a quarter speed. Okay, it's, so regular uh, speed. This one's but... actually for September twenty-seventh, nineteen forty-nine. Wow. And uh, and what is that of? Who is that? Well, this one's a Naval Air Reserve show. Okay. And on the back is a Bob or Bob Hope show with uh, Dinah Shore. Same. Why year. would they be so mixed like that? Like the front and back. Well, this is, is a it... total half hour. Right. So these would be sent to the records, uh, the radio stations, and they'd play the one side. And if you see on the record itself, it has a space there for the commercials to go in. Oh, wow. So it's just a, a empty space on the actual... Yeah, so okay. they, they'd have a live announcer do the commercial, right. and then it, by the time he was done, it'd go back into You'd the show. Back in. There was okay. no pausing, no yeah. stopping. Yeah. It was just boom. And That's then they'd amazing. get these every day for the day. And now who do they come from? I mean, what's the label on these things? Like, who, who was it distributing these things? I mean, because the shows themselves are kind of uh, very different, right? They're uh, Radio Recorders Incorporated, Allied Radio Manufacturers, okay, Hollywood, California. So this huh. would have been a syndicated wow. uh, radio series, probably that went nationwide, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. And uh, uh, now, h- how did you acquire some of these things? Uh, former radio stations, privately? Uh, well, you know, uh, once in a while. Uh, like I know, see uh, when they they basically destroyed the Viscount building that was on Olette Avenue there. Right. A lot of the stuff that was in the basement they just got rid of. Yeah. So I was able to acquire some stuff that way, and uh, I belonged to like that. Of uh, course, was the old radio station. Yeah, yeah. The, the original mm-hmm. uh, when the, the Big Eight was still around for sure, and uh, yeah, they tore that down. So a lot of that stuff had to go. And uh, so, what was some of that stuff you acquired? Obviously, discs um, and and some tape as well, and and that's a different kind of tape. Yeah, so it. it would be acid reel. It'd be mm-hmm. like uh, uh, wheel to wheel or reel to reel tape. And uh, unfortunately, that stuff doesn't last. Um, and, yeah. and call it acid were reels you, because they basically over ten years they just disintegrate. Were they you able to out. transfer any of those? That, did you have some of those things? Or? I got some. Like whatever I got, I automatically. Like I even had a player that played these things because these plays from the outside or inside out these records. So oh, wow. um, you, I actually made a record player to play these, and I recorded them onto a cassette, and then transferred them to MP3. Right, but, and then uh, did some rest- restoration, I guess, on the computer. Probably needed it. Did, well, yeah, yeah. get get rid of some of the pops. But you know, yeah. I, I really like that stuff because it's when you're listening to old radio. Well, that's the original sound. right? I mean, even now, even fully restored, you're going to get some pops and wheezes and stuff. It's just the way the airwaves are, eh? And then uh, over time, obviously, some of the shows went uh, to television. What are what are a few of the uh, the popular ones that actually went to TV? Oh, there's quite a few. Pretty much everything in the '50s started out on radio, um, like uh, the Great Gildersleeve, Fibber McGee and Molly, um, Dennis the Menace, uh, uh, Dragnet. Uh, my favorite husband turned into a, pretty much an all-time favorite for most people. I love Lucy. Mm-hmm. Um, Ozzy and Harriet, I guess. Uh, yeah, right? Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet and uh, um, Dragnet, I, I think I already said that, Wagon Train and uh, 
Um, there's so many different. Uh, ones. Well, how, how did you? How do you feel about the uh, the tel- seeing the television shows after? What was your? Uh, uh, how was that for you? Seeing the television shows as uh, compared to you know what you were listening to in the old time radio shows? Do you think it was? You know, was it was it kind of true to the shows, or was it? You know what I mean? Well, they they pretty much stick to the same format. Unfortunately, it's it's with TV. There's no theater of the mind. We'll say so. Everything had to be laid out. I mean, that's why you. Uh, that's why people basically switched. It was easier to switch over to tra- uh, transition from t- uh, radio to television because it was everything was there. You didn't have to think of what was, you know, there was nothing to think about. It was just basically just sit there and watch the show. Sure, yeah. And uh, the rarest old time radio shows, in, in your opinion, or that you have. You know what? What would you say is that? Uh, that would be the ones dating from the late twenties, early thirties, because a lot of them they just didn't, uh, they just didn't survive. Um, a lot of the stuff, like even this one, um, when they were played, they were destroyed. Why? Of, Why destroyed? Because they weren't allowed because of the copyrights. They couldn't uh, replay them. It wasn't okay, a yeah. rebroadcast. It had a date, and when it was done, it was done. Well, actually, that's funny that you, I mean they actually physically have to be destroyed because of the f- fact now with computers, obviously, we just think of it as deleting a file. We don't realize that we're actually destroying a file, you know, right. for whatever purpose. The same kind of thing, I guess. So, is, uh, has there been any recent radio theater that you know of? Uh, does well, it still go on anywhere? Well, I know there's some. I mean, there's some on. Uh, on digital radio, I but I mean, mean not, not the old stuff, though. Actually, replayed now because I, I see some of that stuff like on the internet and whatnot. But I mean, is anybody doing that now? Uh, performing on radio, you know what oh, I mean? Like like live? Doing yeah, it now? yeah. I mean, there is uh, remakes. Uh, I know in nineteen, I'm going to say eighty nine, ninety. Uh, I was aware of uh, they redid a Hall of Fantasy uh, radio adaptation of uh, the Jewels of Kali. And it was a that's a phenomenal show. It's one that uh, I can't really um, say enough about. I mean, it was done so good, but unfortunately, it can't be aired because of uh, of the of the copyrights. So, I mean, I heard it myself. It right. was a good one. I actually have a copy of it, mm-hmm. but I couldn't play that one. But I mean, it was fantastic. It was all done by university students. Yeah. They all got into the role and they did it like the old time. They all had the mics on the stage and they went and uh, did the whole half hour drama right there on live radio it was just fantastic to see well that's pretty cool and uh, when we come back we'll talk to you more about old time radio and also uh, the radios and such that you uh, you actually restore pretty amazing right after this you're, you're listening, listening to you talking, talking to me with big jd, JD on cjam 99.1 fm redefining radio in windsor and detroit do you have an interesting career you have an interesting life experience to share with others. If you'd like to be a guest on You Talking to Me, contact me, Big JD, at the You Talking to Me website. That's youtalkingtome.ca. The letter U, talking, the number two, me, youtalkingtome.ca. My guest this week on You Talking to Me is Mark Bodishon. We're talking about old time radio uh, shows and radios, as a matter of fact. Now, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the history? That's the history of old time radio. Yeah, the history of old time radio. It was very, uh, it was very interesting because back, uh, well, you, you got to think the first broadcast was the late twenties. There wasn't very many sets because it was uh, Tridon sets. They had three dials. You had to tune tune three dials to get one station, mm-hmm. and then you had to monkey with the volume and a set of tubes in one of those things because if you tuned turned up the 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 voltage on the tubes you'd pop the tubes and a, and basically a set of four tubes would be a half a week's pay for most people that yeah, were working yeah. so and actually I mean, you told me a scenario about how much uh, they were in uh, respect to the price of a car oh at yeah one time so well, yeah true. talk I about mean, that as well well some radios back in like 30 31 i mean uh you could buy a, a model a for like uh, 350 bucks, brand new off the lot, or you could buy, you know, you could buy a, a radio for the same price, an Atwater Kent or, or Midwest or something, it would be about the same or more. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some uh, Midwest sets are, that back then were 1000 to $1,100. Wow. All chrome chassis, 32 tubes. I mean, that was like, you know, like, like a Lamborghini is now. It yeah, was yeah. A they, and they weren't even making vehicles with chrome chassis then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's cool. So yeah, continue on a little bit with the with the history of uh, 
OTR? Well, most of the well, like most of it caught on back back in about 37, 38, and uh, that's when radio got into its golden age. And uh, a lot of people are are basically getting out of the depression, you know, the Great Depression, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, money was tight, but radio was free, and everybody could listen to it. And uh, the kids would come home from school, and they they get crawl in front of the radio and they listen to Little Orphan Annie and and uh, you know that sponsors back then they were clever because they 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 targeted their markets you sure know? yeah and uh, and uh, with Little Orphan Annie I mean two box tops and ten cents you got yourself a decoder badge that would uh, help you with the next show because right. they give you codes and you do the codes on the thing and you could write it down what the message was that mm-hmm. Little Orphan Annie was telling you and that was all the entertainment back then really that was yeah. it so yeah I mean before radio I mean it was basically a player piano or somebody who knew how to play a guitar I mean, or I, jacks yeah pretty much <laughs> remember jacks yeah and then back in about 19 oh, late 40s I guess TV really took a hold and I mean, even in Ontario, we only had maybe six channels for the whole province. But you know, Windsor, we only had like two back in the the late forties. And, uh, and we're down know, to one now, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, uh, the well, television. One local, anyways. Yeah. But we do have some. We uh, we. I mean, being that we're a border city, we have the Americans. They kind of flood the market. But sure, uh, yeah. But back then, there was only like two. So I mean, they uh, they switched over once. Uh, you know. From radio to TV, just because the the market got smaller in radio, because everybody wanted to switch over to TV, because that was a new thing, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like today's computers and phones. I mean, every other week you got a new phone coming out, and it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, and you got to get the new one. Got to have the new one because it, 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 it does something one. different. It does all the rest of the stuff that the other one does, yeah. but it does like one, one thing. One different. extra thing, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what, what do you, what do you think the uh, how this all kind of fizzled out? Was it just the fact that you know, moving from radio to TV. I mean, I don't think there was any disinterest in it, really, because, I mean, television was the next level, really, you know what I mean, taking it to a new height, basically, and we just kind of switched over, right, I guess? Well, yeah, but I think uh, it just got, it was easier to watch TV than it was to uh, listen to radio. Like, uh, I I encourage new people to actually listen to an old-time radio show, whether you listen to it on the radio or if you listen to it on the computer or on digital radio, or even if you have a, an old record kicking around or you see one at a thrift store or something, uh, you know, like the Lone Ranger or, or uh, the Green Hornet or the Shadow or something, give it a listen. Close your eyes and just take a listen and see how it works. And you'll, you'll discover that you're, you yourself could be a great director because you you got all the pictures in your head and mm-hmm. you see everything playing out as it's going. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to build your imagination. It's great for kids. Wonderful for kids. Yeah, yeah. So, Encouraging uh, yeah. things that use their imagination is great. Not enough of them are doing that now. Uh, let's let's move into uh, the radios a little bit. Uh, tell us about some of the radios you have and uh, what got you into restoring these things. Well, like I said, I mean, with my dad taking me to the thing, and it was fascinating just seeing the, the guy sitting there all alone in a room with a microphone. Yeah. And uh, you could hear, you know, the speaker in the lobby going, and it was, it was, it was really nice. And so uh, when I was 14, I was interested because I was listening to that same station. I listened to it because I was kind of hooked on that station, sure, so yeah. I listened to it. And one day I, uh, I ended up listening to Honey Radio. I think it was uh, 6.30 a.m. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had radio Oh, that shows. early in the morning? No, I'm just kidding. 6.30 Six, a.m. Yeah, that's <laughs> cute. I should say amplitude modulation, Ooh. but anyways, um, no, uh, they um, they had a radio show and it was uh, it was uh, Candy Madsen, mm-hmm. and uh, she's a crime photographer. It was, it was actually an okay show, but after that they had the Shadow, and then once I heard the Shadow, I was hooked. Yeah, that was a know? big one. And then uh, and then I started listening to Five Eighty because they had the older style music, and I liked that stuff. You know, I was always in the bands and that and. Uh, and so at uh, 10 o'clock, on comes a radio show. I'm like, oh, and they're on every night. And it was seven days a week. It was great. So I just started taping them. And then after taping them for so long, I had to have an old radio so I could listen to the old shows on the old radio. And So then we got in, get into the old radios, and, and you have a pretty amazing collection of them. Yeah. Well, I used to. I mean, uh-huh. I have. It's pretty good. But, yeah. I mean, I used to have a huge amount. I had them everywhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, now I think I'm down to... Oh, maybe a hundred or a little over a hundred but uh, i used to have quite a few of them yeah now you uh you do the restoration of the actual mechanics of these things but uh you have somebody else do the actual wood 
generally? Uh, yeah, I, well, I do the I do electrical because I like to listen to them. Or and I don't want to listen. To, I don't want to listen to the hum. I don't want to hear any pops or wheezes or nothing, right, unless right. it's from the airwaves, and then sure. I have no problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I don't really have a lot of time. I have a, a buddy of mine. His name's Neil, and uh, he's he's excellent when it comes to radio. He 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 seems to know how to do it the old ways. Mm -hmm. He does everything. It's all hand rubbed. I mean, when <clears throat> when they're done, it looks like it was just just bought. You know. So uh, no, he does a great job, and. Uh, but no, I like the electrical getting that going. That way, I can uh, uh, listen to it once in a while, hear whatever's on, and and a lot of the older radios had shortwave, and you know, shortwave's still booming right now. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, where do you generally get these radios, or or have, did you get the radios that you've restored? Do you uh, are yeah. they just things you've? I mean, can, can you get them at garage sales and things like that? Oh, or yeah, did garage you? sales, auctions, especially yeah. eBay. Uh -huh. I mean, I bought a radio. I call it the, the potato chip radio. I paid ninety nine cents for this radio. It came yeah. from PEI. I paid eight dollars shipping. Yeah, I got it and it was in a flat box, maybe two inches tall by six inches wide, and mm -hmm. basically it was basically one side, the other side, the other side, the chassis, and all the tubes laid in it. Oh. And, and it's now sitting <clears throat> at uh, my better half's house, and it's a beautiful Emerson. It, they call it the lunchbox radio because it has a handle, looks like a lunchbox, and uh, <coughs> it's an excellent shape. And now, but I did the radio, and Neil did the the cabinet, and it just came out amazing. For ninety nine cents, I got a, like a forty dollar radio, fifty dollar radio. That's very cool. Now I know some of the radios are plastic. I guess when you get into the fifties and whatnot, <clears throat> something in my throat. Uh, uh, in in restoring those, are, are those things that you have to restore? I mean, they're a little bit newer. I wouldn't imagine they're and probably. You know, tubes or anything like that or are they kind of transistor well it's that? not uh, see a lot that's a, a big mistake most people think they think oh it's tubes well the tubes are bad it ain't mm -hmm. working but it's not uh the thing is with those radios is the power supplies go because the elect electrolytic were oil and tinfoil and paper oil tin, and tinfoil and paper and it just kept going and going 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 yeah well what happens is the oil seeps through eventually through the tinfoil foil and gets into the paper and then once that happens Basically, the passenger's okay. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you change that, and I mean, I've I've been working on radios for over twenty years now, mm -hmm. and I must have restored, oh, close to six hundred radios, and uh, I think I've replaced maybe ten tubes total. Oh wow! Okay. But I have one hundred twenty-six thousand tubes because back in the <laughs> late eighties, when I tube you know, collector first got. Uh, um, back into the hobby we'll say mm -hmm. i went over and everybody was switching over to solid state back then so i'm like can i buy your tubes can i buy your inventory can i sure, buy yeah. i went from here all the way up up to chatham bought all the stores out and uh and uh, i've been storing them all this time but i i use them if i ever need a tube i got it did you ever get tubes from mckay's television by chance uh park and Dougal? i got gray's okay gray's, yeah, gray's, mark's right. tv yeah <laughs> uh crescent tv um uh, uptown radio Mm -hmm. That used to be on Wine Dot. Yep. Bought them out. I got a lot of nice stuff in there. They had a huge auction. Oh, it was so good. Wow, that was a long time ago. And can you always get the parts that you need uh, even today? Like, uh, if you have them, like I always try to get get them. And I, I when I strip a, a chassis, basically I keep everything that I can, and I'll just keep it for years. And uh, I have friends that do the same. So we basically pool our resources. If someone's working on something and I got the part, he's got it. Yeah, and. Uh, and I got a lot of a lot of different parts just from buying out the stores. So, if there's ever a case I need something, there's always eBay you know, or friends, or I just wait. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, I just make one. The internet comes along for the most part. There's positives and negatives as far as the internet goes for music and the record companies, labels, and bands and things like that. But for old time radio, because of its transition to television, I guess more so than anything. Uh, would you say the internet has probably been a good thing for that because we're able to kind of bring it back in some way? Well, I like the internet because the internet gives you what you want now. You mm -hmm. don't have to wait for it. You don't have to wait till eight o'clock. You can get it right now. If you want it right sure. now, you got it right now. Just go over and click. Yeah. Um, another positive thing, there's so much possibilities with the internet. A lot of these, uh, uh, for old time radio sake anyways, a lot of the old uh, um, websites, basically they... They play samples of their stuff, so you can actually listen to an old radio show as it was played back in the 40s or 50s. And, uh, I mean, that's going to be the new trend. 
I mean, AM radio basically has been fa- being phased out since the, the late 80s. So, I mean, now they got these little inputs you can plug into your car and listen to, you know, digital radio, or you can listen to your MP3 player. So it's only a matter of time before you can just plug into Internet radio and be able to listen to whatever you want. Yeah, pretty much and on demand, like you say. Tell us about some of the uh, maybe some of the films that are out there that you know of, because I know you've you've spoke about you know some of the uh, some of the movies or films that are kind of related. Oh, there's there's a bunch. Uh, if uh, anybody wants to watch a, a good movie, there's like uh, Radio Land Murders, uh, Radio Days. That's uh, uh, a Woody Allen film, um, and uh, there's a bunch that uh, they're on the hobby itself. There's. Uh, mm-hmm. There's um, like the radio collector. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, there's also um, around the dial, and uh, around the dial too. There's uh, the Philco radio story. I mean, there's so many different uh, movies out there, and uh, like modern stuff. I mean, there was a guy. It was a ham operator listening to radio waves. I mean, that, well, that was that come out what six years ago, something like that. I mean, it's it's still in the news today, so mm-hmm. people are still listening to it. Where can listeners uh, is a good spot maybe for them to find out more information on the web? I know that you have a, a Facebook page, uh, Golden Age of Radio. They can search on Facebook for more information. And you know, uh, are, there, are there any other spots that are? Uh... Well, I mean, uh, like anything, YouTube seems to be the source. Um, I know I have a, a Facebook page, it's Golden Age uh, of Radio, and uh, but uh, anyways, you can look up my name. Uh, for sure, uh, that'll. I have a um, YouTube site, and I have some some radio programming there. And uh, and when you look it up, it always has like at, like uh, related links. I mean, there's there's so many. Good stuff. Well, it was great having you on, Mark, and uh, appreciate you sharing your expertise on old time radio with us. Thanks a lot. Oh, thanks a lot, JD. All right, for more information and some amazing videos, check out Mark's uh, Google Plus page. Search uh, Mark Bodichon, B-O-D-E-C-H-O-N, and as well search uh, Golden Age of Radio on Facebook. Mark's always eager to tell you anything he knows. And thanks for joining us this week, and I'll see you back here next Wednesday, 4 p.m., for you talking to me on CGM 99.1 FM, Redefining Radio in Windsor and Detroit. I'm Big J.D. Thanks for listening.